Thank you. Please. Um, Alex Simmons with The Intercept. Um, I wanted to ask about Secretary Kerry's comments this week on MSNBC about Yemen. Okay. Um, he, he said, uh, I think the Saudis, and this is a quote, uh, expressed their desire to make certain that they're not endangering civilians. Um, and the statement that he's referencing there from the coalition um, said that coalition forces have fully complied with international law and have a robust process to ensure all targets are genuinely military. And it goes on to say they've never used cluster bombs. So my question is, this is a coalition that has targeted clinics and hospitals and schools and factories. How can Secretary Kerry possibly take their assertions that they're trying not to endanger civilians at face value? So, um, uh, a couple of uh, points to make on that. One is uh, um, Saudi Arabia has uh, created a an investigation commission uh, to look into uh, and evaluate its military targeting uh, to ensure the protection of civilians, as well as uh, to investigate any incidents of civilian casualties or civilian civilian harm uh, during the conflict in Yemen. Um, uh, we've also engaged uh, regularly with uh, Saudi Arabia, as well as other coalition members, on the need to uh, investigate all credible reports of civilian casualties uh, allegedly caused by uh, coalition airstrikes, uh, and have reminded uh, the Saudis of their obligations under end-use provisions. I'm talking about cluster munitions in this case, uh, uh, as well as encouraging them to do their utmost to avoid harm to civilian uh, populations uh, and, and, and to avoid damaging critical infrastructure. Sure. Um, but the only, the only strike we've seen them investigate so far publicly was the attack on an MSF hospital back in October. Sure. And their ambassador to the UN later said that, although he said that that was a mistake, he said that it was because MSF provided the wrong coordinates. So I, I guess it, are, are we trusting them to investigate their own war crimes? Should they accede to UN investigation of their war crimes? I, I think uh, this is obviously something that we uh, are in continued dialogue with uh, Saudi Arabia about. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, been very clear about our concerns uh, about uh, civilian casualties. Uh, we do believe that they are able to conduct uh, credible investigations into some of these incidents. Mm -hmm. uh, but our uh, emphasis more largely, or more broadly rather, is on uh, the UN political process. Uh, we uh, have been very clear that there's no military solution to what's happening in Yemen. Mm -hmm. And there is a UN process that needs to be adhered to and pursued by uh, all parties. Mark, yeah. Uh, Hi, uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Uh, so sort of a follow-up. Sure. We, we've been talking about uh, different wrong things that your friends and allies are doing around the world. And so the UN has looked into what Ukraine is doing, what Kiev is doing, and they have come to the conclusion that the Kiev government allows torture, runs secret jails. Uh, what is your response to the UN report? I'm sorry, you're referring to what report exactly? Ivan uh, Simonovich, and it's in the Times today, in the La uh, Times of London. Uh, the SBU is systematically rounding up and torturing suspected rebel sympathizers. UN Assistant Secretary General for Human Rights uh, made the presentation in Kiev today. Oh, okay. Um, and then he presented I, I the report. Yeah. So uh, we have read the report? You have. Um, we have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you're shocked. Uh, we actually read reports. Um, uh, we're deeply troubled that the conflict in Ukraine has now claimed over 9,000 lives and injured more than 20,000 people. Uh, we once again call on uh, uh, the so-called authorities in this separatist-controlled areas uh, to cease their human rights abuses, including killings, tortures, ill treatment, illegal detention, forced labor, as well as restrictions on freedom of movement, uh, peaceful assembly, uh, and expression. Uh, we also call on them to allow in U UN monitors mm -hmm. uh, whose mandate would cover the entirety of Ukraine, 
mm -hmm. uh, including Crimea and the eastern uh, part of Ukraine. Uh, and at the same time, we also call on the government of Ukraine to ensure a prompt and thorough and transparent investigation and appropriate prosecution of all persons uh, responsible for alleged, alleged uh, incidents of abuses perpetrated by its forces, including those uh, contained uh, that are described in the UN report. Uh, so it's you know, a UN report. It's it is a UN report. Alleged means what? The UN alleges that? Yes, and we, as I said, we call on uh, the UN the, or the UN, the Ukrainian government, uh, right. to hold its own forces and own individual own people accountable uh, uh, for their actions uh, in these uh, incidents. One incident that we've been calling uh, for Ukraine to uh, have people accountable uh, is uh, the massacre in Odessa, uh, the Holocaust in Odessa two, year, two years ago. Yeah, what's been... what's uh, this same guy, uh, Mr. Shimonovich, the same UN person, said there's been quote unquote no significant progress in that investigation. How much more time do we need for the investigation to become significant to make significant progress? Well, first of all, um, uh, you know, uh, obviously our. Uh, it was a terrible tragedy, uh, what occurred in Odessa, uh, and uh, we've been very clear uh, since the immediate aftermath of that tragedy uh, that we believe it should uh, be promptly or uh, fully investigated uh, by the uh, Ukrainian authorities, uh, and uh, we continue that to, uh, to urge that. And uh, lastly, but it's really uh, for them. You, to, uh, it's really for them, rather, to, to, to speak to the timeline for that investigation. Since since uh, this is a government that you, uh, I, I would call it sponsor, <laughs> uh, and defend at at any turn, at every turn, uh, do you accept any responsibility of your own uh, for what that government is doing and not doing in terms of upholding human rights? Well, um, Andre, uh, I would uh, respond to your uh, question by reminding everyone in this room what has happened in Ukraine, which is that uh, Russia uh, seized uh, territory belonging to the country of Ukraine, Crimea, uh, and then supported separatists in eastern Ukraine. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, create a conflict uh, that the government of Ukraine and the armed forces of Ukraine have been uh, struggling to deal with uh, for the past uh, several years. Uh, so let's be very clear on uh, the fact that a sovereign nation had, that so had its sovereignty violated by its neighbor, uh, Russia, and continues to uh, respond to that threat on its soil. Uh, it has uh, made a number of reforms, uh, both economic and political, uh, and has made uh, a consistent uh, effort to comply with its com uh, commitments uh, uh, on the Minsk agreement. Uh, we have not seen, uh, frankly, uh, Russia or the separatists of uh meet that same standard. Uh, so let's be very clear about uh, where the uh, responsibility for the situation in Ukraine lies. Please. Uh, and, uh, if